Hello and happy St. Patrick's Day from Goosebump Cottage. It is quite a rainy day out there. However, usually it's much colder on St. Patrick's Day here in Ireland. So we're actually hoping to get a few things done, even if it's that wet outside. But now, since we're in the house, I want to show off my seedlings, which are the first seedlings to go into the ground here at Goosebump Cottage. So I put them on the windowsill since we don't have a greenhouse or a seedling house to stay, keep outside and they're doing quite well. So the first ones to grow were the turnips. Yes, I have improvised <laughs> some labels out of tin foil, uh, which works. Tin foil and cellar tape works just fine. So we have the turnips here and these guys are rainbow beetroot that literally just popped yesterday. These guys are radishes over here, some different types of radishes. These are Chinese radishes and they're, make, they're doing very well. Rainbow radishes and these in the middle are French radishes. I do like my radish. And this one is cos lettuce. Uh, here we have the Swiss chard, two different varieties, but they're not out yet. Uh, curly lettuce, not out yet. Webs lettuce, which I'm actually not sure if it's going to come out at all, but I had the seeds and they were getting old. So I said to myself, I'm just going to try it anyway. The first spring onions, you see, they're coming out just this morning. And mustard leaf. In case you haven't tried mustard leaf, if you like mustard, you will really going to like mustard leaf. Um, it's literally like eating a salad with a flavor of mustard it is just fantastic. So that's it for here. But I also have more plants here. These are Elysium. So they're going to make beautiful flowers and sweet peas. Oh, there's the first one coming out. First sweet pea out or maybe it's just an Elysium. It's probably a, an escaped Elysium seed and giant sunflower. I have planted giant sunflower on the East Coast and I didn't realize how giant it actually gets. So I really hope they're going to, they're going to do well because they grow to be like three meters tall and they have beautiful giant sunflower heads, which is amazing. Um, and then these guys here, nothing's going on here. We have different flowers in this one. And this one, cauliflower here. And summer purple sprouting broccoli here. And autumn purple sprouting broccoli there. Yes, we love our purple sprouting broccoli. And kohlrabi. Uh, <laughs> with kohlrabi, we haven't really found a way to cook it or eat it and really enjoy it. However, it just looks really cool and we have the space. So, and we had the seeds, so we're just going to plant it. Maybe this year I can get like a cookbook where I can try a few other things and maybe we'll find a way to really love it. But yeah, so far it just looks good. Uh, pak choy. This is the first time I'm planting pak choy. So I don't know how well it's going to do in Ireland, but um, we'll see. And this one here is misato radishes. They are my favorite type of radishes. They're like white and red and they really have a smooth, slightly spicy flavor. They're really good. Misato radishes. Remember that. And these are the beans over here. Uh, they're broad beans. And we have the first one popping out here, you see? Awesome. Anyway, the, the, you see how the soil is moving, so they're, they're, all, they're all doing stuff in there. Uh, all of these are marigolds, which we're going to plant some more because they are excellent sacrificial plants for the slugs. And more marigold here and coriander here, uh, but these are planted a bit later, so they, they didn't pop up yet. And lavender here, that's going to take some time. And all of this is giant raspberries to go into my berry patch. 
we'll see if they come out or not. So yes, I'm using this bottle since I don't have a sprayer yet. It seems that it's, it's pretty difficult to find a sprayer, uh, but the bottle works. It's fine, champagne bottle, why not? Um, and that's it for the plants that we have now seedling. And next, let me show you outside to show you the first herbs that I've actually planted in the garden. So outside, we have set up the first of the paths in our vegetable garden, which look like this. And for today, we hope to actually continue with the road, with the path all the way to where the cement is. And this way, the mud will diminish in the house. It has already diminished quite a lot in the house, but uh, we could do better. But yeah, it's nice that this week for the first time in maybe a month or so, I don't have muck <laughs> everywhere in the house and try to hoover every day the muck. Anyway, uh, so these are, I think I showed them to you last week as well. These are our herb patches and normally we should have added some compost here on top but we don't have it yet so we're just going to try to do the herbs without the compost because the topsoil we have been told that it's excellent quality so we'll just see how excellent it is and the rosemary survivor rosemary is in the ground the parsley is in the ground the chives are in the ground as well, and they're doing well. The deal, which survived at its best in the windowsill, is in the ground, and it seems to be doing okay, as in for, you know, for a plant that got the shock of its life coming out of the house straight into this piece of ground. So we'll see. And then this stretch here, the long stretch, um, there was this pack of seeds that we got from Lidl and uh, we thought they're normal seeds but they actually came in these stretches of material so they were definitely for direct sowing. I think it was parsley and dill and some other plant uh, so I decided to just put that piece of material in the ground and see if, it, if it's coming out or not. Um, so far no movement. I think this one here is grass. It's, yeah, it's definitely grass. It's, uh, it's not the herbs. But yeah, we'll see if they come out or not. Um, and... One second rosemary plant. A gift from our neighbor. And this one had a bit of a shock as well. I think it was kept inside uh, before arriving to us. Uh, it has loads of flowers, however, after I planted it, you see the leaves are kind of starting to die off. But um, now it's just a waiting game. Uh, we get to see if it's going to survive or not. And that's it so far. Today we hope to plant a bit of the meadow just there on top where the percolation area is. And I'm going to let Arthur show you all the seeds that he got because um, he's really the one who took over the meadow thing. I'm going to help, of course, but that's really his baby. So, yeah, let's see. Seeds. Ooh. Okay, so we have... We've got quite a few seeds. <laughs> uh, we have... To start off, we have... Okay, um, this is a herb mix, or a herb for pasture mix. And... This contains coriander, bird's foot, clover, caraway, parsnip, sorry, caraway parsnip, common fennel, fengreek, I'm not sure what that is, dill, salad, burnet, calendula, black medic, ribworth, yarrow, wild carrot, cumin, burnet, and this is usually added to a field of grass to add a herb mix um, for the animals actually. Um, same for the next one. The next one is chicory, forage chicory. And this is incorporated into the grass mix for strips or strip seeding. And it's suitable for forage for cattle, sheep, goats and deer. Rich in minerals, adding trace elements um, 
And then we have... Sorry, do you want to see what the chicory looks like? That's the chicory. How much did you pay for that? Um, that's undisclosed at this moment in time. <laughs> uh, this is sainfoin seed. Um, sainfoin is a legume with an extensive taproot, very palatable, great addition to hair silage, large seed. That's also okay for animals. We have crimson clover, which is a great nitrogen fixer. And again, it's not okay for animals. Yes, there is a theme here with the animals. I'm not sure if Ellie's noticed that yet. Uh, oh, she did. <laughs> bird's foot trefoil. Deep rooting perennial, again, another light nitrogen fixer, uh, which is used in pastures to improve animal health. Uh, yarrow. Yarrow is a deep rooted uh, forage mix used to diversify pasture mix and provide minerals for livestock. It's very drought resistant. So it has a deep root. Drought in Ireland. <laughs> Seriously. Oxide daisies. Well, they're just pretty. <laughs> nigella seed. Um, there's a lot of nigella seed here. 500 grams is probably enough to do the entire area. Again, it's an annual and it's great for bees and other pollinators. Um, yeah, so that's that one. And then we have two packets of a wildflower meadow mix. And there's... Um, there's quite a mixture of uh, grasses and wildflowers and that. I don't have the actual breakdown of them to hand. So there's a half a kilo of that and another kilo. Sorry, these are all, this is a kilo of stain foin, a kilo of the pasture mix, herb mix, a kilo of chicory, a kilo of bird's foot trefoil, a kilo of crimson clover, 500 grams of jello seed. Uh, I think there's only 100 grams of the yarrow and 100 grams of the oxide daisy and then we have how much is this one this is this is 75 grams and this is just a, a wild kind of a corn flour mix so that should add loads of color and it's just an annual again and then just for a bit of crack <clears throat> picked this up in little yesterday summer flour mix there's a, a whole list of things in there which are all in Latin and I'm not even going to try and translate. Yellow rattle. Yellow, it's actually hard to get yellow rattle. It's, uh, it's pretty much in demand and it's almost out of stock everywhere. So we have four small packs. The yellow rattle is great because what it does is it helps to suppress the grass. It acts like a parasite on the grass and it'll just reduce it. And again, something I picked up in little on I think it was yesterday or Friday. Yeah, it's kind of hard to resist this stuff in the middle, isn't it? It's a climbing flower mix. And Ellie has a plan to do a very elaborate design on one of the sides out there. This is just to add a bit of height to it, if I'm allowed. I don't know if it'll interfere with her design or not. If not, it'll go somewhere else. Stay tuned for the secret. <laughs> Any design. <laughs> <laughs> and a very small pick mix of um, climbing sweet pea, because, well, you got to have sweet pea. Especially the annuals, because there's a lovely smell off these. And I thought they'd be nice up to side these as well. But um, again, I wasn't aware that Ellie had a secret plan. So that's what we've got. And uh, my dear Arthur, do you also want to show us what you snuck in the basket in Lidl yesterday without me? realizing it? Oh, um, yeah. Are you sure that egg's okay? The egg is fine. No chance I can distract you then, no? Nope. Uh, now, so Ellie, Ellie bought a few bulbs in the middle yesterday. A lily, a nice white lily. And I think I might have bought this yellow dahlia. And Ellie bought these lovely dahlias as well. And I just couldn't resist these purple gladioli, which I don't think you mind you. Not at all. We just need to plant them. We need to plant them. We did actually buy some other seeds for the meadow. And they're in here. They're mixed up. 
We've added a few of our neighbour's John seeds. Now it's just a matter of getting them planted. Desi has very kindly left his roller in the back field there. Uh, still undecided whether or not we're going to use the um, the harrow uh, just to break up the ground a little bit. But it's it's quite damp again today. It was perfect last week, almost. But um, it's, it's definitely softened up a bit. So I think we might do a little bit in the front of the percolation area by hand with an ordinary rake and just get some seeds in because we want to get them in. And yeah, that's the plan. Yesterday we went to the farmer's market as we do many times because we, we really, really enjoy it. And uh, at the egg section, uh, we actually found two goose eggs. I never had a goose egg, but I thought it would be appropriate to have a goose egg at a goosebump cottage on St. Patrick's Day. So let me show you how they look because they are very interesting. They're really, really big. Oh my God, have a look. Have a look how big it is. <laughs> and the man said that they were laid yesterday morning. They were still kind of warm when we bought them yesterday morning. And obviously they didn't even get to clean them yet, but look how huge they are. <laughs> so I'm going to make, well, I'm just going to cook one just to see how it's like, because it seems they're quite strong flavored. That's what we were told. So I'm going to hard boil this fella and then I'm going to make egg salad, egg mayo salad with the chives from the garden and maybe I'm thinking some wild garlic because we have it growing around the garden. So let's see. Uh, they said boil for seven minutes, but I think I'm going to boil it for 10. Just to be sure. I <laughs> think I'm going to keep the second one next to the hen eggs. I'm not a recipe developer and I don't pretend to be. I'm not the best cook out there either, but I need to film this because it is the first herb that I'm actually going to pick up from my garden at Goosebomb Cottage. So it just needs to be put on camera. And the chives, the chives are coming to my kitchen. I think that's enough. And I'm going to get the wild garlic with the flower and a few leaves. and maybe another flower and yeah this should be enough the goose the goose egg goes inside the water at goosebump cottage and now my best assistant in the kitchen alexa set timer for 10 minutes 10 minutes starting now and now we need to chop. We need to chop. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop, chop. Chop, 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 chop. Chop, 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 chop. What are you chopping? The first chives that grew in our goosebump cottage. And this is not orthodox for egg mayo sandwiches, but the first wild garlic that we picked up from Goosebump Cottage. Da -da -da -da. And after I chop this, yes, flowers and everything, it's a lovely plant, lovely plant. And are you sure it's wild garlic? Yes, my love, I am sure it's wild garlic and it's not daisies or anything like that. And, oh, this one too. Pa -pa 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 -pa. And also, to brag a bit, we're going to have them with a loaf of bread, olive bread, that we have cooked. When did you make that? Was it two days ago? I think two days ago. Or yesterday. Friday. God, I hope it's fresh. I hope that too. Well, the thing is with this homemade bread that you really have it for like two, three days. After that, it's still fine, but you need to toast it. Maybe we toast this one. Pum, pum, pum. Pum, 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 pum. And a self-respecting uh, uh, 
country lady will make her own mayo, but I like Hellman, so okay. it. And it's boiled. Oh, wow. Well, it's really hard. It is. It's very smell of it. it. Smells like egg. Oh, this is really hard, actually, the, the, shell. the shell, yeah. Oh. Mm. Mm, that's delicious. It's nice, is it? Yeah. Have a taste. Yep. Yeah. Just there's a lot from an egg. Yeah. It, but you know, it's not as big as they were saying. Like, this is enough for like two sandwiches. Yeah. I mean, the way they were talking, you'd think like you'd have a feast. All right. Mayo. Just a little bit. Loads of greens, loads of greens. Okay, this looks done to me. Mm. It's delicious. <laughs> it's actually delicious. You know, we could get two geese. Mm. We could. Mm. So, would you um, get them again? Mm. Yeah? Mm. Do you want to eat now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to Goose Bump College. It's St. Patrick's Day. And we, um, we were going to plant potatoes, but as you can see, it looks a bit wet. So, there'll be no potato planting done today. <laughs> but we want to do something because the weather has improved a little bit. It stopped raining. And we are going to plant the meadow probably next week. Oscar, no. But in the meantime, we're going to do some of this area ourselves, just with a bit of a rake, just give it a bit of a rake, and then scatter some seeds. The seeds are mixed, ready to go in. And we're just going to throw them down and um, see if that works. A bit of an experiment. This bit probably isn't going to get rolled, so we'll see which works better. Rolling or non-rolling. So, time to do a bit of raking. I'm raking away. <laughs> we can take turns. <laughs> so, we're just loosening up the soil a little bit, just to give a little bit of a grip for the seeds. I'm actually going these rocks over here. Ah, oh, throw one for Oscar, would you? Keep busy for two minutes. <laughs> As you can see, the weeds are starting to come up already. But that's all right, because it is supposed to be wild and natural, so. Hopefully it won't be entirely weeds. There's a dock, buttercup. Plenty of scutch grass. So, just loosening it up a little bit. This is hard work, but there's something very satisfying in all of this. Also, where the soil is soft, it's actually not that bad. I feel my muscles though. Always good to have a good woman to help you in the garden. Strong woman. <laughs> it's not so good when Oscar decides to dig a hole in the ramp. Strong man, take over. Damn it. Oscar, what are you doing there, boy? What is going on there? What are you digging for? Huh? What's there? Do you want to help us? Huh? Strong doggy. Strong doggy. <laughs>
as you can see, Oscar's a great help. And he's doing a fantastic job over there. I think we'll keep it for another couple of weeks. I don't think you can hear me. I mean, to be fair to her, she's got a good action with that rake, hasn't she? That's it now, push her back into it, Eddie. No, no, this is giving up. No slacking off there. Keep close eye on these ladies. Where did you learn that rake technique? In rake school. Oh. You went to rake school? Yeah. That wasn't an excuse to stop working. Darn, I thought it is. Now we've reached the end. The last corner. Strong woman is finishing up. No, you're gonna finish up. <laughs> I'm not strong woman anymore. <laughs> but you're almost there. This is hard. But very satisfying. Isn't that right? It is, actually. Okay, switch. <laughs> Ah, she reminds me of that famous poem. Oh, stony grey soil of Monaghan, you've burgled the bank of my youth. Although we're not in Monaghan. And you're not, and I'm not that young, young anymore. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. All right, Oscar. All right. That's the thing about the chief inspector. He's easily distracted by stones. And sticks. Sticks. And cats. And food. And food. And people. And birds. <laughs> I suppose we could just say he's easily distracted. <laughs> Mother. No, there isn't. I think this is it, Art. I think the fun part can begin now. Yeah. I think you're right. I think you're right, Ellie. Go on, go ahead, you do it. What am I doing? Spreading the seeds. Okay. This is the difficult bit, because I have no idea <laughs> about the quantity. I just hope that uh, I manage to get it all out. Let's see, the wind is coming from... Where's the wind coming from? Oh, it's moved, here. It's right. just moving all the time. Yeah. I'll start over here then. Maybe go a bit further down when you spread it. Okay, any chance you might move, Chief Inspector? The wind has really changed direction. <laughs> I 
Can you call him? Oscar. Now, it's the only downside of the, uh, the, the Aldi and Little Mix. There's a lot of sawdust in it, so I have no clue how well this is actually working. Is that only the Aldi and Lidl mix? Uh, more or less. There's a few other bits. It's mostly Aldi and Lidl though. Did you have uh, in there the seeds that we took out previously? Some of them, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think we're going to need more seeds. Yeah, I think we're going to need the other ones so we can actually see them as they're going out. Yeah. Alright, so now we have just spread all of the mix that we're going to put on this area. I really hope it's successful. This area here has really got more of a, an Aldi and Little mix, so I don't know how that's going to turn out. The rest of it has a good mixture of well, the seeds we showed you earlier. Fingers crossed, it grows. And if it doesn't, it'll be a lot of hard work for not very much reward. <laughs> so, hope everybody has a great week. It's St. Paddy's Day and we didn't get to the parade, didn't get to the pub. But then you can't have everything. If you enjoy watching us get up to this sort of activity, please like and subscribe. Click the little bell for notifications of our videos. And have a great week, everybody. Thanks for watching.